Hey guys, it's Cam here. Welcome back to The Build Room. In this week's episode, we're back working on the 125 and we are going to address some paint problems. Now, if you've been the unlucky recipient of one of these in a car park, you might wanna pay attention because we're gonna see what we can do in terms of buffing and then potentially moving on to painting to make this thing look brand new. So stick around and check it out. Now, in last week's episode, we changed the turbo on this thing and uh, that was a heap of fun and the thing's still running well. You should check out that video if you haven't watched it. Um, but for now, we've got damage on the back uh, right-hand quarter of this car and uh, there's not a lot of space to work in, so we're gonna need to turn this thing around. All right, so this is the biggest area of damage or at least the most visible anyway. Um, what I was hoping when I started this episode was this might give me the opportunity to learn how to blend a little bit in terms of you know, doing um, painting color here, but not across here, uh, so that you blend it out across the bumper and you don't have to worry about color matching the boot or the other side of the car. It's really just the match that's here that is important, um, which was gonna be pretty cool. But as I've turned this around in the driveway, I've noticed that there, um, I think I've been hit not once, but twice. So this one over here, which I thought was just a small little scratch here and here, um, if I look at the top here, I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera. Let me clean it, hang on. There are actually these lines that go all the way along here and that is actually cracking in the paint underneath the surface and what that usually is from is an impact here and these are plastic. So when they squash up, the paint cracks and then when they come back out, it sits relatively reasonable, but I'm gonna to have to fix that. So what has gone from painting that corner is probably gonna to have to be paint the entire bumper um, and also this gray trim here, which if I'm gonna be doing that and I'm getting some paint for the bottom, I'm actually thinking I can make this look a little cooler as well. And on the M Sport, this is the M Sport model, it's got different side skirts that have these scallops and they look cool, but they're also just white. So what I'm thinking about doing is color changing inside the scallop uh, to the same gray that is in the back panel there just to match things up. I think that'll look a little bit cooler. So yeah, it's a bit of a bummer, but as usual projects just, you know, they get bigger and bigger as you go, don't they? Still gonna look at this side because I'd like to show you guys, you know, if this is your daily driver and you're not super worried about it, if I was keeping this, I'd probably just tidy this up. But because I'm selling it, um, you know, all of this sort of stuff really does detract from the price of what otherwise is a really excellent condition car. So yeah, I wanna sort this stuff out. So I'll just give this a quick clean down and then we'll see what our starting point looks like without any dirt. All right, so yeah, pretty much what we expected there. This area here, this is all the way through the paint and you're seeing the black plastic underneath the bumper. In this area, however, we might be able to salvage a lot of this. So yeah, just as an interesting exercise, I think what I'll do is I'll give this um, a buff and we'll see just how good we can get this looking before we go. So the idea is just to give you guys an idea of what is possible if you're doing this yourself at home. So there we go huge difference. Uh, for some of you, that might be enough. It's certainly going to be less embarrassing when you're driving the thing around. And you could also just get some touch-up paint and just touch up those areas there. But realistically, we spent a little bit of time with the wool pad on the DA and this product, which is the Rupes DA Fine. There's a DA course and there's also course pads. Uh, they would have made this faster, but using the Fine, it was also very safe. Very little chance of burning through. That was probably uh, maybe 10 minutes on this area alone. So overall, not a big effort for the result that we've got and something anyone can do at home if you've got this sort of damage and you just wanna tidy it up so it's not as obvious. But yeah, in doing this process, I also noticed we've got some more spidering up here. So we are gonna be repainting the bumper. So now it's time to pull the bumper, pull the side skirts off, and then we can get the Beamer out of here and um, get these things up just on some panel stands. First things to get the tail lights out, they're just a single hidden 10 mil nut. And then you can use a trim removal tool to pull the light out in a couple of spots, disconnect your loom, and then rinse and repeat on the other side of the car. Then in the wheel well, there's three eight mil bolts to remove. And once they're out, there's a torque screw that's hidden behind the liner uh, on the top of the bumper. 
Then on the underside, there's another three bolts, and then do the same again on the other side of the car. Once all those are out, you can pull the bumper out from one corner, be firm, but don't yank it, then keep that going all the way down the length, then the bumper will come away from the car, and you can disconnect the wiring looms for the reverse sensors and the number plate lights, and then your bumper's off. Then for the side skirts, there's about 11 torque screws on the underside of the car. Take all of those out, and then it's just a simple case of snapping it away from the clips on the body um, as you did with the rear bumper. Then repeat the process on the other side, and we're done. All right, so other side came off pretty easily as expected. Uh, one thing I did not expect, however, was the damage to be this bad. So there is a slice all the way through the plastic there, and then this one here actually penetrates through as well. So that is gonna have to be repaired. But it's good to learn new skills. So, you know, if I flip this over, you can see along the back, line all the way along there. Now, what I need to do here is use a plastic repair kit and fix this all up. But to be honest, um, the episode for this is gonna take a while, so I'm not gonna show you that in this episode. I will film it, however, and we'll put it in for uh, a following episode down the road. So I'm just gonna go like this. All right, and we're done. Uh, and even though that looks like dirty gorilla snot there, uh, on the other side, it's pretty good. Uh, that's got flexible filler in it and stuff just to get it close to where we need. Uh, so we can start moving on the rest of the stuff. I've cleaned up the garage a little bit so we've got a bit more room to work. And I'm going to start, actually I have already started. And you can see here I've marked out some things. And this is areas where I've got chips and scratches that have gone all the way through. Now, with plastics, the more of the paint we can leave on, the better. So rather than try and sand this down to the point where I get that out, and that would take me all the way down to the plastic, what I am gonna do is actually fill these. And then we just need to sand them down flat and prime over them. So all of these areas where we've just got little bits and scratches, right? Because the adhesion of this paint, the factory paint onto the plastic, will be much better than getting it down to plastic and then trying to apply successfully more coats of paint on top. We will have to use adhesion promoters or plastic primers, whatever you wanna call them, uh, for areas like this. Um, but I'm gonna try and minimize that where possible. And in terms of priming, we are only gonna prime those areas where we go back through or we do repairs because top coat wise, painting onto this once it's been appropriately sanded and scuffed is the way that we wanna go. With the exception of something like this, there's no dent here or anything, but what has happened is this plastic has compressed and what it's done is put hairline cracks all through the paint through here. If we were to try and paint over this, paint's gonna get into those, it's gonna to want to lift or react. So in these areas, I will wanna take this back um, at least through the crackings, but highly likely that we will be going all the way down to plastic and then we will be using adhesion promoters and stuff like that and then priming over the top. So yeah, for now, uh, let's get into prepping these. I've also got a part of another car that I'm gonna be prepping at the same time. See if you can guess what it's from. It will appear in a later episode. Anyway, uh, let's get into it. All right, so we start with the Dyna Braid on the heavy stuff. I'm using 240 grit from memory here, just trying to get as much of that spider cracking out as I possibly can, and then roughing up all the areas that I need to do the patchwork on. And this is just a very light keying of the surface so that our filler can adhere to that rather than peel off. And then I'm gonna go through some more spider cracking up the top here. The filler that I'm gonna use here is an Isopon ultra flexible filler. You've just gotta make sure you get the mix ratios right and mix the hardener in really well. And then I'm just gonna fill through here. And what I'm trying to do is mess with this enough to get it in the cracks, so wiping it right in, but then also just have a little bit proud on the surface that I can sand back later uh, without having to delve into that paint too much. I'll do the same on the filler panel, just making sure that I don't uh, go too heavy with this. Then I'm gonna uh, spend a little bit of time working on that other car. If anyone can guess, put a comment below uh, as to what car you think that's from. That'll be in an upcoming episode. And while that's happened, we've dried our filler, so 240 on a block and I'm just gonna block this as flat as I can get it. Um, just paying attention to the thickness of the paint around what I'm sanding. All right, so this one must have deformed slightly, but um, look, it's a very thin skim around the edges, but there's no edge there, so that one will be fine. And you can see on the other ones, we pretty much just filled the dot. So now I'm just gonna uh, sand the other couple of little bits, exactly the same way I've done here. And then I'm gonna go through and I think I'm gonna prime from basically there all the way down all the way to the edges, just because it's easier than trying to blend in from either side. And then on this side, I'll probably just spot in this area here, 
maybe sort of across there and then around there. And then on this one, I think I'll probably just flick sort of like this, keep it inside the uh, edges there. I mean, there'll be some overspray, but we have to sand back the whole bumper anyway for color. So yeah, I'll just flick it in here and we'll see how we go. Uh, you can have a quick closer look at the scuttle panel there. Uh, and then on this one, I'm probably gonna rough sand to here so that we can key in and then prime everything forward. So yeah, let's crack on with that now. So that paint has had a fair amount of time to dry. It's a couple of days. I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any shrinking or anything like that. Overall, the paint went really well. It went down really nice and smooth. I was really happy with that considering, like I said, I haven't painted in a while. In terms of the masking and things like that, so I basically soft edge masked most of these areas. Where we've got that line, if I'd put a hard tape line there, there would have been a very pronounced ridge here. There's pretty much nothing. In fact, if I run my hand somewhere like here where it's most pronounced, that is actually more of a ridge on this side of the tape where it's just a misting of overspray uh, to this side. So it should sand out really nicely. It didn't go that well on some areas. There's a couple of little areas. Where have I got one? Here. So this has got a reasonable size ridge in it. Um, and you've got to be really careful to sand this out flat. So I'll probably just block that back with a little bit of sort of 320 or 400. Those should come out and I'll just smooth the other ones in. All right, starting blocking out that edge very carefully. That looks pretty good to me. Carefully sanding the contours uh, and a tape line helps. You can run that tape across the edge and then just block up to it as much as you like. While you're blocking, keep an eye out for little pinhole dents like this. Keep on blocking, plenty of primer and it's gone. If you're gonna do a edge line, you should then go back and tape the opposite side so that again, you can block up against that. And then when you pull your tape off, you can have a nice sharp line. After that, we can move on to dyno braiding uh, all of the other surfaces and then start to wet and dry. Just using 600 wet and dry here, getting into all the contours, making sure it stays nice and wet. This was a 400 grit on the Dyna braid, so you still gotta go back over it with 600, the whole bumper, just to make sure you don't have any sanding lines coming through. 
on the end panels here, 600 like all of the other areas, and then cleaned it down and went over it with 800 a little bit further on. And that was basically to even out the orange peel. And then on the rest of the skirt, it's just a scotch bright and some scuff it paste, just to make sure we key that surface up really nicely so the paint will adhere. Make sure you get everywhere on this stuff. Uh, anywhere that you don't scuff up enough, you run the risk of having a stone chip that turns into a flake. All right, so we are set up and ready to go. I did end up doing a little bit of the whole Dexter Kill Room thing. It's actually getting pretty late. It's, um, the sun's gone down and it's a Sunday and I don't want to put my compressor outside. And if I have it in here, the compressor's going to stir up all the air, blow dust around and get dust through everything. So um, I've just plasticked off that. It's open down this end, so it can um, free air into this space. And I've kind of done the what I would consider the bare minimum clean to get this over the line. In terms of the prep on these things, so this I basically sanded back with 400 on the dyno braid. I was just trying to move through as quickly as possible. And because I did that, I blew through a lot of the edges, running over this with 400 by hand, and then 600 probably would have been more than enough. In the areas where I did blow through, I've already put plastic primer on these, so they should be good to take a base coat anyway. Uh, on this one, I did something a little different. Until about there, I did with 600, and then I actually went from 800 from there to about there, just to um, lightly reduce the orange peel. So hopefully we're gonna blend the orange peel across this thing as well. Uh, and when I paint this, as I paint the white, and I'll probably paint the white so we've still got a little bit of a rub through here, I'll probably paint out to about here. And what we're gonna do is what's known as a wet bed with a clear base or a binder. We'll do that so that we don't end up with like a dry line here as we uh, feather out the paint. So yeah, let's check out the paint. So I'm gonna be using two guns for this one. First one is my Devilbus GTI Pro. That's gonna be the main gun. Uh, what I've got is this little touch up gun just to just to basically wet the bed so I don't have to switch between guns. Uh, and I have, um, this is uh, DuPont Centauri, it's a 600, this is what my local paint shop uses. This is a base coat binder, so this is like a clear base coat. And then we've got the accent gray for the back panels, we don't need that right now. And then we've got the white uh, for the top coat. Uh, this one has been color matched and sprayed out, so hopefully it's quite close to the, what the finished product should look like. They're never gonna be perfect, which is why you have to blend things out but hopefully we're in a good starting position with that one. So yeah, let's get these mixed up and we'll get some paint on. All right, so this is the clear binder, little bit of thinners, stir it up, and in the gun. Easy as that, that's a two to one ratio. Same with the color, we're gonna need more of that obviously, so two to one, there's about half a liter here all up mixed. Gun in the rack. Now I'm laying down the uh, wet bed. I'm running that to about three or four inches past where I intend to put base coat. You notice when I'm putting the base coat down, I'm doing the edges at the moment, but when I'm doing the faces, I'm gonna be careful to spray down the panel, not up. Now I can throw a little bit more color on all of the bumpers. You see it's fairly translucent. It wasn't great cover. Focusing on the edges a lot, just to make sure I get through those and then throwing it down fairly wet coming up pretty good at this point, although it is still pretty translucent where I've rubbed through, you can see that. Um, so now it's time for more coats. Again, focusing on the edges. Uh, you always forget the edges and then smash it on the big surfaces. Um, it is starting to cover now. This is my second coat, um, second full coat anyway. And you can see here again, I'm being careful not to spray up the skirt because nobody likes it when you do that. So yeah, this is the final coat that I'm gonna put on here. I'm going fairly wet, I'm getting good cover. And here I'm putting down another wet bed for the final coat of color. And you can see me about four inches inward of that for the final coat. All right, so uh, look, we've got all the white on. It went pretty well. It's not drying as quickly as I want. And that's because temperatures have really dropped and it's probably about 10 degrees out here at the moment, which is certainly not optimal for drying paint. You want about 20 degrees at least. So I've got paint on. It's a little thick. There's a lot of gloss on this, and this has been flashing for probably an hour. It should be more matte than that. In addition to that, if we come around on this side, there was an area, I don't know if it'll come up in the light, but just in here where there was a little bit of a fry up, a little bit of a paint reaction, which is strange because I don't think I sanded through here and I don't think this was primer. This was just original white paint under it. Then I was stupid and I actually just reached out and touched it and I put a fingerprint in it. <laughs> 
So the paint is clearly not drying. So I don't want to go and throw any more paint on. So what I'm gonna do is just leave this till the morning and then I will probably come back and give this a little bit of an intercoat sand and then a final dusting. This one I'm happy with, we'll just leave this. This white is reasonable. Um, the blend looks pretty good. Uh, it's very hard to see color wise. You can tell the difference in sheen at the moment because that is shiny and this is obviously scuffed. But in terms of a color variation, it looks almost perfect all the way through there. So let's let this dry overnight and then I'll come back. All right, so we're back again. It is the next day. The white bumper is not in the shot at the moment because I have uh, sprayed a couple of coats of that. I basically sanded the whole thing back in 800, dusted over the areas that had had that fry up and things like that, and then gave it a sort of a coat and a half of a very medium coat, I will say. And it came up pretty good. So that's drying now, and now it's time to tackle the gray. So obviously I've masked these out. Masking is pretty boring, I'm not gonna really talk to you much about that, except to say that where I have this fine line, so the, the blue tape with the numbers on it is easy release, and then this fine line tape is like a vinyl tape that's designed to give a very crisp edge down it. Now that, if you can see, this one's lifted already, it does have a tendency to lift, you gotta be careful with it, but that is on the top. The reason being is once I've sprayed this, uh, we are going to peel that off, so have a nice crisp line and it doesn't dry out, and then we can let it flash off for probably, you know, a couple of hours uh, until it's nice and dry, and then we can remove the rest of the tape. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. Um, I did leave scratches and stuff in it, you know, I just wanted to see how that will go over. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plasti prime these. I'll let that dry and then we will spray some gray on. So yeah, um, I'm not gonna show you putting the plastic primer down, that's not very interesting. Uh, what will be interesting is to see how this color goes on. So let's get into it. All right, sit rep. Uh, good news and bad news. The good news is, uh, now that all of the overspray is cleared, I can see these a little bit clearer. Um, back panel, awesome. Uh, you can see how matte that finish is. That's the kind of finish that I was looking for on the rest of the car. And you can see where it gets a bit thicker. It just gets a little bit more shiny. So I probably, uh, I didn't let it dry enough here, but this will matte down. And then once it's cleared out, you shouldn't really notice too much on something like that. On these ones, however, I think I got just enough paint on to be okay. Um, the problem is though, uh, the fine line tape that I use lifted quite badly. You should be using it a, when it's warm and B, ideally new fine line tape and a good quality one. I just had a roll. I thought it was good. It probably wasn't and it lifted. The other thing is that I probably didn't give it enough room to stick. So let's have a look at this closely. So here it lifted up a little bit, but not badly. Fine through here. And then it gets bad again there all the way through and then good again. Now, what's the common theme here? In this section where it's lifted, the blue tape is a lot closer. Basically it lifted because there wasn't enough of a smooth surface for the fine line paint to stick to. So what was already questionable to start with uh, got worse. So I'm gonna have to try and fix this. I've got a couple of ideas. First thing I've got to do is untape it so I can see the extent of the damage and then I'll try and clean it up and we'll come back to see how much of a success it was or was not. All right, so I might have just snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Basically, I tried a bunch of different things. Uh, the good news was that all of the issues with the paint or with the line were sort of towards the back end, which was past the area that I was blending. So I was able to use thinners down here. So what I did first was I tried a felt squeegee that I used for vinyl wrapping, uh, and I put thinners on that and rubbed it down. That, because the felt was a bit grabby, tend to pull the edge. So then I went back and tried a razor blade. The razor blade worked well to clean up the line, except for the fact that the paint on these is so thin 
that it was very easy to go through. And I went through in a couple of small areas, but to be honest, I'm not really bothered because they're so small. They'll look like a rock chip when it's on the car and it's a 10 year old car, so I don't need to get these perfect. But then I tried something that was even better and that was just to throw fine line tape back over the line the where I wanted it to be and then just use 2K thinners on a microfiber and I rubbed it down and basically it cleaned all the paint off anywhere there wasn't tape. So I had a nice clean edge. When I peeled it back, it was dead perfect. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Like I said, there's a couple of areas from the razor blade that look like stone chips, but in the grand scheme of things, no big deal. It looks pretty damn good. Back end is looking sweet still. Got the main bumper out here. Now it's time to mix up some clear and do the final coats. And this is the clear coat in question. It is a two to one mix with no reducer in this one. Um, I think I could have probably put reducer in it and maybe I should have, but it went on pretty good. I didn't get a single one in this whole job, which for someone that hasn't sprayed in probably 15 years, I did pretty well. And I think maybe having uh, not much reducer in that might have played into that. Um, this was not too bad to put down. The issue that you're gonna see here is I end up looking like a gorilla in the mist as I struggle to even be able to see through the haze of paint. All right, it is a few hours later. The uh, clear haze has subsided and I can actually see what I'm doing in here now. Um, I ended up putting on another two coats of clear, which is what the manufacturer specs. Overall, it came out pretty good. There is some dirt but they're really small grains really of dust and they, I think they're really only in the top layer so they should be very easy to clean out. The color looks awesome. The skirts, um, I'm really impressed with how they came out in the end from what they were. I mean, like I said, I've gone through and you know, this is these marks here, they're underneath the clear. That is where I scrape down to the bare plastic. So that's just life, they're gonna stay there. But by the same token, they were stone chips that I didn't want to fix. So, you know, they're encapsulated, that's encapsulated. This wasn't supposed to be perfect. At the end of the day, it's going back on a 10 year old car. Trying to get these perfect is counterproductive. Um, this one, however, this is actually the better of the two. And yeah, it looks amazing. I'm so impressed with uh, how neat the line came out. This is gonna be perfect. I've got a little bit of something something for these. But for now, this place is pretty trashed. Uh, I just wanna get all this cleaned up. These need probably a day or so to dry really well. So we're gonna take a quick break now and then we can regroup shortly once we've got this all sorted out. And we're back. Now, before we get into some glamour shots of the car, cause it is all back together, a quick safety moment. You guys will have seen the sheer density of the fumes that were in here while I was spray painting. I really should have been ventilating this place. It's actually quite dangerous when you start to get fumes that thick because they can ignite if you've got an ignition source. I would have opened the garage part way, but like I said, it was the middle of the night and I didn't want to wake up the neighbors. So yeah, ventilate as much as you can without getting dust everywhere. And also make sure you're wearing a respirator. Uh, I would recommend a full face one because apart from the fact that you're not breathing stuff in, you've still got mucus membranes in your eyes and your ears. I had earplugs in. Um, I do have a full mask and I will be using that in future spray jobs. But yeah, with that out of the way, I've put my bling on or at least part of it, my M Performance sticker. Can't leave home without it. So let's see the car. I gotta say, I'm absolutely stoked with the way this thing came out. Um, the color match is probably 95% there. Uh, you can see a difference between the body and the bumper, but the actual difference in color is the same from the front bumper to the bonnet. So, you know, realistically, we got this color pretty much bang on. And if I didn't point it out, you probably wouldn't tell. The skirts look awesome. The M Sport logo, um, love it or hate it, I love it. It's staying, uh, get over it. Rear bumper also looks mint. Uh, just the right amount of orange peel, nice and shiny. I didn't need to um, 1500 or 2000 grit any of this. I literally just clay barred it and then I buffed it with the Rupes DA course. And there really wasn't any need for more than that on something that's not a show car. So yeah, I am super happy with the way this came out. And that just means it's time for the standard stuff. If you're new to the channel, we're gonna put our flagship Violet Crumbles episodes here and some other cool content down there. And then other than that, I just wanna say thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on The Build Room. Bye for now.